Hello everyone! Welcome to the tutorial which will demonstrate basic functionality of Unity extension Exposed which is currently available on the Asset Store. Have you ever faced problems like recreating references for your components on new game objects over and over again? Or that you don't have much visual control of resulting references because you set them dynamically in the code? If you do, this video is exactly for you. I will show you how to solve these problems, create rules for mapping references to scene objects automatically and have always visual feedback about their configuration. Normally you would drag and drop these references to your components fields or set them dynamically in the code in your awake methods. With Exposed you can always easily see what mapping is currently used and what are the resulting references. Using this kind of setup will also boost your scene's loading times in your final builds because the scene references will be set in advance. For purpose of this tutorial I am using slightly modified Unity Project Survival Shooter which is also available on the Asset Store. I have made some changes for better demonstration of key features of Exposed Extension. So, let's dive in. In this demo, we will set exposed references for hero character prefab. We will instantiate it into the scene and add exposed references script to it. It's the main component which is needed for reference settings. This hero character has two main mono behaviors on it. Character health and character movement. For references mapping, we will create two reusable configuration files. Let's create folder references and then, using right click context menu, we will create exposed configuration file. We need it for both mono behaviors on the game object. After that, we will just simply assign them to exposed references component fields. Right now, we are ready to begin applying the rules for mapping references. We will enable mapping for all fields with references except from dev clip field, which refers to project asset, not object in the scene. Let's enable some rules which refer to components on this game object. Exposed references component shows you exactly the names of variables on both components. You can also enable a rule for mapping the component, which is on one of the children game objects. There are few additional choices for this kind of rule. We are able to search also on inactive children game objects or exclude current game objects from searching. For the last two variables on this component, we won't search in current game object hierarchy, but in the whole scene by looking for exact class type. In this case, enemy manager components, which are stored to list to be able to dynamically add references during play mode, and game over manager, which will be used for notifications about changes in current object state. So now we have quite easily set some basic references. Let's have a look at some more rule settings, which will enable us to use more options that Exposed Extension offers. In the same manner, we would like to map damage image and health slider component to our character variables. At first, we will try to map them by using same rule as we did before for Game Over Manager and Enemy Managers. However, as you can see, there are more game objects in the scene which have image and slider components attached, so we can't identify them for sure. Here we can use additional filtering feature for this rule. So let's filter output by game object's name. Now we can see that we have successfully mapped required game objects components. However, this setting won't be sufficient when we add another instance of hero prefab to the scene. As you can see, all fields are referring to the correct components on the new game object, except for health slider and damage image. Both two instances are referring to the same GUI elements, which is not desirable behavior. To correct this, we will use another additional rule setting that will add current game object's name to the filter. Now the field is referring to game object which has slider type of component and its name is Hero 1 Health Slider. Hero 2 instance will automatically map references to the game object with Hero 2 Health Slider name. 
Right now, we have no game objects with these names in the scene, so let's add them. We will duplicate this part of GUI and rename game objects to proper names for mapping. So now we have two hero sliders and two hero damage images present in the scene. And as you can see, references to health slider and damage image are automatically correctly set for both hero characters. To complete everything, we will also set the rules for mapping references for the second component, hero movement. The first two variables refer to components on current game object. And for the last one, we can apply a rule based on filtering according to game object stack floor. As you have seen in this tutorial, we could quite easily set the rules for reference mapping, which can be automatically reused whenever these two components appear. For more refined mapping, there's only need to follow basic scene game objects naming conventions. This will also help you to keep your scene hierarchy clean and well structured in general. Alright, from now on, you know how to create the rules for mapping references automatically and always have visual control about resulting references. You have also boosted loading times of the scenes because all configured scene references are set in advance. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the exposed extension as well. Thank you for watching.